My daughter, Molly Dodd, prefers to go solo. She's tried it the other way, found it sadly wanting. But it's a big bed in a big apartment in the big city. Too big, if you ask me, for one solitary redhead. I'm hoping that someday in the not too distant future, someone will come along to remedy that situation. That's my hope. Molly, well, I guess she's got enough to do to just keep all the balls in the air. Try getting that kind of service with that push-button monstrosity you'll be riding in as of next week. See, machines can't anticipate, nor can they talk, nor can they comment on the inappropriateness of certain outfits for a first day on a new job. Oh, I knew you were going to say something. Do we need to be that red? This happens to be a perfect ensemble, Davy. A red ensemble, but a perfect ensemble. Uh-huh. You know, with no elevator man, to be honest with you, you could walk out of here believing that. Yes, well, I'm not exactly anchoring the five o'clock news. I'm selling books. The clothes are right, and I am not listening to you. Twelve, please. Dr. Litchfield? Oh, is that you? Dr. Litchfield? Hi. Hi, it's me, Molly Dodd. Oh, uh, yes. Remember? How are you? Uh, I'm okay. Do you remember me? Uh, you look a bit confused. Uh, of course. Uh, Molly Dodd. Mm -hmm. uh, you told me about your ex-husband and how you just couldn't let go. Uh, Nina Shapiro recommended that you talk. Right, right. No, for a second I thought you'd drawn a blank. So, so, how are you doing? Uh, better. Uh, no, no I, I think I am better. Those first few visits with you were really helpful to me. I, now, I, I know I have many rivers to cross. I have miles to go before I sleep, but those first few steps were very important to me. Uh, see, I'd never really been in therapy before. Uh, hey, are you going downtown? I've got to go to my job. Maybe we could share a cab. Uh, actually, I'm going uptown. Uh, you know, I was wondering if we could talk sometime about some of the things that we... we... Uh, I'm kind of in a hurry, Molly. Oh, sure. Um, see, Dr. Litchfield, I tried to schedule several more appointments with you, but you seem to be very difficult to get a hold of. Yeah, well, it's been very hectic. I, I've been book solid. The height of crazy season, huh? <laughs> uh, listen, Molly, uh, I really have to run. Nice seeing you. Oh, you know, if I could stop by, I, you know, I, maybe you could squeeze me in early one morning. Or late. I don't know. I, I don't think that's a particularly good idea. Well, uh, why not? I mean, is there something wrong? No, no, I just, uh, I don't feel that I can properly relate to your problem, and uh, I feel guilty taking your money. Well, I mean, it'd be my decision, though, basically, wouldn't it? I mean, if that's the way I want to spend my money, it's sort of up to me, isn't it? No, unfortunately, it's up to me, and uh, I don't want to see you anymore. Now, please, I've got to go. We should be open by now. Uh, shouldn't you have the overhead lights on? Oh, yeah. I'll get them. Kind of makes a world of difference, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of does. Well, here I am. Hey, uh, 
What can I do for you? Oh, just give me an idea of uh, what you want me to do first. What I want you to do first? Uh, where do I start? Boy, uh, where do you start? Uh, yeah. We have a lot of books here. Uh, any particular type you're looking for. You don't know who I am, do you? Uh, no. You have no idea why I'm here. Uh, something to do with books, I assume. Why do I feel I have absolutely no identity today? Oh, oh. Uh, are you a uh, manufacturer's rep? Because uh, my father takes care of all that uh, stuff. And, uh, he'll be in later. Or maybe he's in Montreal. No, I work here, Moss. You hired me yesterday. I did? Well, I thought so. Yeah, I might have been mistaken. I... There wasn't a great deal of eye contact, but I could have sworn you were talking to me. I'm Molly Dodd, and uh, I was really looking forward to working with you here. But, you know, I, if this all comes as a total surprise no, to you... No, no. Um, no. Uh, I must have been uh, preoccupied with some thing. I, uh, I want you to work here. Um, yeah, you will work here. Uh, <laughs> I'm Moss Goodman. Well, yes, I know that. <laughs> so, um, where do we begin, hmm? Well, I don't know. How about a bagel and coffee? Great. So, where do I go to get them? Uh, I'll go. You stay here. No, uh, wait, wait. Uh, see, uh, what if somebody comes in? Uh, what's today? Uh, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesdays are slow. Uh, where's my wallet? Your wallet? I... Yeah. Gosh, you know, I haven't seen it. Can you lend me a few dollars? Sure. Uh, do you want me to look for it? What? Your wallet. Uh, there's probably nothing in it. Uh, how, how did it get to be Wednesday? Well, you know, that just happens. The days go by. <laughs> uh, egg, onion, uh, pumpernickel, sesame feed, garlic, whole wheat. No, I, no, a plain one is just fine. Mm, I like sesame feed. <laughs> seed. That's sesame seed. I know. Yeah, but you keep saying sesame feed. I do? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I must have been looking at your feet. Yeah, yeah, I've been noticing you spend a great portion of your day staring down at the floor. Um, yeah, I should look up more often, shouldn't I? And uh, I mumble, too. <laughs> but you do have very nice feet, anyway. Well, uh, so do you. No, I mean that. I mean, the way they uh, fit into your shoes. Oh, thank you very much. I, I pride myself on that. And I have quite wonderful ankles, too. I haven't noticed those yet. No. Well, uh, they're directly above my feet. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, are you like a normal guy, or are you just as bizarre as is humanly possible? I mean, are you going to show me how this place works, or mm -hmm. just be weird, or what? You know? Because uh, I am fascinated by certain aspects of this situation, and uh, uh, I'm kind of confused about others, you know? Like... Are you toying with me or what? You know, or maybe you're just a genuine eccentric. I mean, I can deal with that. Oh, gee whiz. Um, you know, I never thought about it like that. Maybe I do have some strange you know, idiosyncrasies, but you do have very nice feed. I, I noticed that almost immediately. Out the side door and down the steps. When you get to the basement, you'll see a door marked, Do Not Enter. Go in. Lock the door behind you and wait. Um, excuse me, where are you sending that person? Can you believe it? They're interviewing doormen. They ain't even offering me the job. I see. So you're sending that innocent man down into the bowels of the building, never to be seen again. Oh, no, there's a way out. You've just got to be good at mazes and able to breathe underwater. Uh-huh. Have you mentioned to anybody that you might be interested in the doorman job? I ain't about to grovel to these people. 
There's still such a thing as McQuinn pride. Would you mind if I groveled for you? Suit yourself. Way I figure I've had a decent run. I'm gonna go out with my head high. Come on, I'll take you on a tour and point out a few of my favorite floors to you. Oh. Uh, kind of a retrospective. Oh. Now, first is the first floor. Uh, call the first floor because it's the floor you get to first. But you might want to get a little snapshot of that, Miss Dodd. And, of course, the second floor. Well, what can I say about the second floor? Let's just be glad it's not the World Trade Center. Am I getting too sentimental for you, Miss Dodd? No, too stupid. How is your job, by the way? It's kind of bohemian. I don't quite know what I'm doing, but then neither does the man who runs it. Name? Moss Goodman. It's Goodman's Books. I know the premises. It's the only bookstore in the city carrying the complete works of Barry Comstock. Am I the last person on earth to have heard of Barry Comstock? Maybe one of the last five. He's very chic. I like him better than Alexis Hochberg. Well, who doesn't? Of course, Hochberg tends to get bogged down in symbolism. But you tend to overlook that because it's such lyrical prose. Yes, well, uh, he's excellent. She's. I know. Uh, she, Alexis. I thought you said Alex. Uh, Haley. Uh, I'm very familiar with Hoffman. Berg. Berg. Watch it! Watch it! Oh. Watch it! All right, let's go, Pop. Uh, didn't you do this yesterday? Yeah, well, we're doing it again. This time we're serious. Is anybody there? Hello? If anybody's there, could you answer me? I'm Molly Dodd. I live in 12A. Okay, um, I understand. If you need anything, I'll be just down the hall, okay? So, so long for now. Is this Grand Central Station here or what? This is the Casey. How are you? I haven't seen you poke your head outside that cave in about a year. I've had a headache. So what's the racket? Well, they took that poor man in 12F out on a stretcher. Shimkin. You know his name. Of course I know his name. He's my neighbor. Well, he's my neighbor, too. Huh. Well, maybe you ain't Gregorius like me. Maybe. Shimkin, huh? He's huh. not a nice man. I think he was in the rackets in the old days. He used to be married to one of Dutch Schultz's cousins. Oh. Did he croak? No, he was a little gray, but he was still croaking. I, you know what? There's somebody in that apartment right now. Nah. Yeah, they closed the door right in my face. It's the wind. I heard someone. You heard cats. It's got about 65 of them in there. No, really? Well, two or three. And outside of them, Shimkin lives alone. Well, maybe. I gotta go finish my book. Barry Comstock, can this guy write? Well, I couldn't live like this. I want this to be a gradual process. I wait for inspiration to hit me. So far, the vigil continues. I have rolls of wallpaper I never used in the basement. It's a very cheery pattern. The mallards. Not just mallards. All variety of duck. Uh, well, I'm no longer in a duck mode, but thanks, Mom. Suit yourself. Keep this look. Anyway, it's getting late. I miss my train. Well, you can stay here. Where? Tub? Thanks. But I'm defrosting fish. Your father couldn't possibly broil it himself. Oh, we have to plan Thanksgiving, or as your brother refers to it, Rape of the Indian Day. Hey, listen, you know, I've got a great idea for Thanksgiving. What do you say to a turkey? Hello. Oh, my God. God. Well, yeah. oh, the bars must have closed yeah, early. How you doing? I'm all right. Good. This is my this mom. Is right. mm. How you doing? Mom, these are the guys. Yeah. Which particular guys are we talking about? Oh, this is Fred's old band. 
Yeah, this is Sherman, Chuck, John B., Larry. Ah, a bunch of musicians. What a treat. Uh, don't mean to barge in, but we were in the neighborhood. Do you mind if I look for some food? No, I, I haven't cooked in a couple of years. See what's in there. Should I leave? I feel as if I should leave. You must be giving something away. Everything okay in here? Well, Davy, yes, fine. Unusual at this hour is all. Florence? Davy. Did you hear they were going push button? I did. Seems a shame. It does. What's in the big fiddle case? A big fiddle. Just checking. Doubt whether an automatic elevator would look in on you like this, Miss Dodd? No, and thank you, Davy. Part of my job. Time-honored tradition. Good night. Good night. Okay, so what's the deal? Where is he? When's the last time you got this thing tuned? What's going on? You know, you gotta keep your instrument in tune. Otherwise, you know, it tends to go flat on you. We think he's upstate somewhere. Nobody knows for sure. Maybe the mountains. Is he in trouble or something? No messages. We get it kind of cryptic. We are talking about Mr. Zoot. Uh-huh, the one and only. Fred's on the ropes. How extraordinary. It ain't one piece of edible food anywhere in this kitchen. Molly. Remember this too? Yep, lullaby of the leaves. Hard to tell on that piano. So what does he want? Sounds to me like cash. I uh, underestimate him, Florence. Uh, this isn't always about money. Well, gentlemen, I happen to be married to a musician myself. Uh, granted, he is not a jazz musician, which I happen to find a contradiction in terms anyway. But be that as it may, I have had my share of experiences with flaky types. Present company excluded, of course. Thank you very much. That's Molly Dodd, Lullaby of the Leaves. Uh, we're going to take 10. We'll be right back. Boy, is it them or is it us? Oh, it's never us, Fred. Must be them. Yeah. Maybe it's the moon, maybe the tides. I don't know. I got a toothache. I almost got hit by a cab crossing 18th Street trying to get here on time. Yeah, bum karma, but that doesn't account for how flat you were singing. Yeah, well, it doesn't account for that dumb key that you were in and out of either. Not my favorite tune. Well, listen, why don't you just play anything you want? Can I get a beer? Yeah, it's a good thing nobody's here. Mm, good thing it's just a hobby. It's a good thing you uh, shampooed your hair with that apricot stuff. But why did I have to wait till 10 minutes to showtime to tear out of the apartment, to almost get killed, to race in here and find you checking your watch? Because I didn't know where you were. I was getting worried. I was waiting for you at home, like we said. We said that? Yes, we did. Molly, I'll meet you at the apartment at 7.30 and we will go to the club together. Now, that was Fred C. Dodd, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, November 5th, 1982. I got hung up. Yeah, well, I get hung up, too. You know, every time you say you're going to be somewhere, and never are. You know what, Molly? You've been getting mad at me a lot lately. You notice that? I come home late, you're upset. I forget a birthday, it is the end of the world. I don't make a phone call, and you throw a chair or something. Did you take some money out of my wallet? Money? Mm -hmm. When? This morning. Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I like to think of it as our money. Yeah, me too. So? So, let me know. So that if I'm late, and if I don't have enough money to take a bus, I don't have to go chasing all over Manhattan, you know, and almost get killed and end up singing flat because you make me so damn... I didn't take all the money. Yes, you did. I did? Freddy, can I get you back on the stand early? I'm going to lose everybody. Uh -uh. Union rules, Mr. Hendakis. Got to take ten. Well, listen, you can take forever if you don't get back up there. What are rules, anyway? Made to be broken. Yeah. 
<laughs> Listen, you two sounded great tonight. I'd rather get the audience in here to hear you. <laughs> Maybe we can stand outside and trip people. Nah, you just keep doing what you've been doing. They're gonna notice you a little matter of time, that's all. You two perfect together. Reminds me of me and my first wife, which incidentally was my best wife. One out of six ain't bad. <laughs> yeah, beats the odds. Uh, I see you understand. Okay, boys, back to work. Back to work, we got them all. Got a crowd, they're leaving. Oh, great, great. Oh, you Simon the Greek? And Dacus thinks we were good? Yeah, well, there's no accounting for taste, is there? Well, maybe we're better than we think. Maybe we generate a lot of heat. Yeah, it's beginning to wear me down, Fred. You know, it's not so much fun anymore. Well, what difference does it make? It's just a hobby, right? You owe me 25 bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome them back. The Fred Dodd Quintet, featuring Molly Dodd. Who is it? Police. Hi. Hi. Remember me? I, uh, Detective Hawthorne. Nate. Mm hmm. I, uh, do you guys work on Saturday? Yeah, um, well, I was looking for your friend, um... Uh... Nina. Nina? Uh, Shapiro. Right, Nina right. Shapiro. Uh, I, I wanted to ask her some more questions about the robbery. I thought she might be here. No, no, she isn't. Good. Later tonight at 11 p.m. 10 Central, a money-hungry administrator dries up the resources of a famine relief group on Spencer for Hire. Then at midnight, 11 Central, Kate and Allie teen stars Allison Smith and Ari Myers share their tips on coping with change on What's Up, Dr. Ruth? Now, stay tuned for Emmy-nominated actress Blair Brown in another half hour of the days and nights of Molly Dodd, next, right here on Lifetime.